Okay, so here's a question from Joan. Hello, Manelli. What's your secret to pick that well with a thumb pick? Um, good question here. And the way typically, I mean, a lot of people who, who would typically pick, they would use a actual plectrum uh, to pick, which is, which is great. There's nothing, that's probably the preferred way to do it, to be honest. Um, it's just that for me personally, because uh, I play finger style, you know, I, I, I rely on my, all my fingers to be free, as free as possible. That allows me to have that pick to be independent as well. So if I'm ever doing this looping stuff, what I typically do with this is I always tend to rest my my thumb pick on the string below it. So you can see it stops it, it locks it from going past it. The reason I say that is because otherwise, you know, I could easily go way too far. You see, right now I'm going like seven inches, eight inches away from the guitar. Obviously, this isn't this isn't um, an, an exaggeration. But I just want to show you the importance of keeping it as close as possible. This is another form of finger economy. Keeping your fingers as close as possible. So, and notice that I'm also angling the pick down, kind of like a gypsy jazz player. The gypsy jazz players will typically have that anchored, uh, or sorry, the, 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 the wrist sort of pivoted like this. So it's that downward motion. Now, this, this didn't come natural by any means. Uh, this took me years, and to be honest, I'm still working on that. I'm st I still don't really have that down as much as I would like. But when I'm doing this sort of stuff, that was more of a free, uh, of a free stroke. Notice here, I'm doing the alternate picking versus the rest stroke. You see, I'm resting it there. There, I'm doing the rest strokes as well. So if you want more power, the more power you want, see rest, free stroke, rest, free. So I'm kind of going up into the air. And when you do that quick enough, you start to even sort of start to very gently pivot the thumb. But then you get more of this scratchy sound, right? Versus the flat sound. It's very subtle. It's a very subtle distinction between going down and pivoting the thumb ever so slightly, anchoring it down and up. So this is typically how I like to do these sorts of picking patterns with the right hand. It's really good that, that um, I think another good thing, good advantage of this is that you can very quickly and easily do these palm mute. You see I'm palm muting right now. To get these sort of uh, almost uh, Al Di Miola uh, type uh, type sounds, right? But it's it's really again it, it does take a bit of time to get this to just become second nature. But when it does, um, it kind of everything just starts to unfold itself. Especially when you're doing loop pedal jams like like this, what I'm doing, which I've been doing a lot of um, this last little bit. So I would just be patient with that. I would just go over your scales. Another really good thing that you could do is start doing the sweep picking. You could go down, up, down, down. So you see you're doing two downward motions when you're, when you're switching to an adjacent string. Another very uh, important tip that I, I find uh, whenever I'm kind of looking at st some of my students working on the, these sorts of techniques, um, this is a good, really good exercise to focus on the, the downward sweep. You can even do that with full arpeggio. so forth.